Hey, Dylan DeJesus. We talk about all things custom sneakers around here, and today I'm gonna be answering some of your most asked questions on another episode of Ask DCF. Should you paint the shoe first or sock liner? So I found that when I have my entire design really planned out, it's a lot easier to knock out the entire guts of the shoe, AKA the sock liner and tongue. Since you have to mask off the entire upper to paint your sock liner and then airbrush it from a lot of weird angles to make sure you're hitting it all, what you don't want to happen is slightly mess up on your tape job and get some of that sock liner paint on your already completed upper. So if you knock it out beforehand, you have nothing to worry about. What is the best size paintbrush for line work? 95% of the time, you'll probably see me opt for a toothpick when doing any line work, but if I ever do need to grab a brush, I just use the size zero round brushes from CraftSmart that you can pick up in value packs. I recently had to use these on a pair of Gara Jordan ones since the character design was so huge on them. Or sometimes I'll opt for the Zem brand as well. So nothing too crazy. How do you manage large orders of three plus pairs I've recently been getting larger orders? So first off, congratulations, this is an awesome problem to have. What I found to be the single most important thing when it comes to managing bulk orders is being efficient with your time. The goal here is to take something like a single shoe design that might take you somewhere around 10 hours to complete and start to be able to do, let's say four pairs in 20 hours. Now you might ask, how am I going to cut my time in half on a per pair basis? This can happen when you start to group all of your tasks together. Do all of your prepping at the same time, then do all of your taping at the same time, then do all of your airbrushing at the same time, and this will significantly cut down on the amount of time that you spend switching between tasks. And by doing this type of work, you can really start to hopefully see some growth in your business, especially if you start to be able to do much more work in much less time. What have you found is the most sought after design and should you do those? I think the answer to this one can be yes, but also no. The first problem with doing these is that you're not breaking out from the pack at all. You're fighting a never ending battle if you're doing stuff that anyone else can do since there's always going to be someone cheaper and faster. However, something that I've always done, even here on YouTube, is try to mix these projects in every so often to try to cast a wider net. If there's an opportunity to get more eyes on your work, that can be a positive thing, but now you'll need other quality stuff to show them. So if you're trying to grow, I don't think it's a bad thing to try to implement a one for you, one for me type strategy where you're testing out a lot of different designs. Painting rubber, what the, how, where, when, why, and how? There's a reason that you probably don't see a lot of colored tires out there. When we're talking about rubber soles that are in constant contact with rough surfaces, they're always gonna be susceptible to paint chipping regardless of what prep work or finisher you use. So it's definitely best to avoid these if long-term durability is your main priority. Other than doing customs, what's the best technique to get customers? So they say as an entrepreneur, you need to wear many hats, right? Well, you can switch hats from being the artist to being on the marketing and advertising side of your business. Brush up on your video editing and content creation. Knowing these types of things is only gonna help you in the long run. If you're just trying to look for other things to paint, consider working on something like jean jackets, helmets, or even painting a canvas. See if there's any upcoming sneaker conventions nearby you where you could go and display some of your work. Or something else that you could do is offer free consultations with clients where you'll show them a mock-up of something that they might be interested in purchasing from you. Now mock-ups are absolutely something that you could charge for, but if you're just in the position where you're trying to grow and you're trying to reach a larger audience, this might help increase your reach and potentially generate more sales for you. What is your worst injury? So I have actually broken three different bones in my life. The first one, when I was five years old, I was playing in my neighbor's yard, slipped on wet grass somehow, and I broke the largest bone in the human body, which is the femur bone. And I had to be in a half body cast for six weeks. And now one of my legs is actually a quarter inch shorter than the other one. And there went my hoop dreams, unfortunately. Do you make a mock-up for all of your customs and show your clients for approval? There are so many factors that go into this one. What type of artwork are you doing? What's your clientele like? Are you potentially running into issues where clients aren't liking what you're making for them potentially? But if you're an artist who likes to just begin a project and then let the art and inspiration come to you as you move along, 
it might be hard for you to commit to a mock-up early on, but it can be really beneficial to just making sure you're always on the same page as your client for what that end product should look like. I mean, just a random example could be something like, let's say you were commissioned to do a Chicago Bears Jordan 1 and you go ahead and paint the entire thing orange and ultimately they wanted a navy blue pair. It's still a Chicago Bears theme, but it's not exactly what they wanted. It can also work as a little bit of a teaser since your end product should absolutely blow your mock-up out of the water that it can make them appreciate it even more once they see it brought to life. How do you paint yellow? I'm finding that difficult. So when it comes to painting literally any color, one hack that you can always, always, always count on is mixing in a little bit of white into some of your early base coats. So in the most basic scenario, let's take an all white leather Air Force One and let's say you wanna paint it yellow, we wanna to try to get this done in somewhere right around five coats. Start with about 25% yellow and 75% white. Then on your next coat, do about 50% yellow and 50% white. Then on your third coat, do about 75% yellow and 25% white. Then you usually wanna finish with about two coats of 100% yellow. Now, you don't need to do this if you're painting something neutral like black. But if you've painted any other regular color on leather, you've probably experienced something like this before. And who knows, you might've ended up painting 10 coats just to get the job done, and that never ends well. I have so many questions, but I feel like I need to ask in person. Would you do a DCF experience tour? It would be an absolute dream come true to take the course on tour. Hopefully we can continue to build upon each one and make it the best experience possible so that it warrants the interest to do so. Whether that means us hitting some of the major cities here stateside or even taking it across the pond, who knows? I sure would love to be able to check out a Chelsea game at the bridge. Do you only use one paintbrush and clean with water? How to do fades? So my preferred solution for cleaning brushes is one of these paint pucks. You could just fill it with water or some other brush cleaning solution. And these make cleaning your brushes an absolute breeze. And you can store them here as well. As far as only using one brush, it totally depends on the job and the design. But one of these paint pucks definitely makes switching colors with the same brush a whole lot easier. Now, when it comes to doing fades with the brush, although these are much easier to do with an airbrush, you can certainly still get the job done with a few secret tricks. However, these are much better demonstrated than spoken. So if you're interested in taking your fades by hand to the next level, make sure you check out this video next. All right, guys, everybody get out there and just create.